Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, so my name is Eleonora Paklons, uh, and today I'm going to present research by um, myself and by my co-supervisor, Thomas Smits. Um, so, for those of you who don't really know what a lantern slide is, uh, here in the background you see uh, many examples of them. So, they are uh, glass slides uh, that were projected through um, the Magic Lantern, which is an historical project projecting device. Um, and uh, it was a very, very popular uh, form of entertainment and education uh, in the 19th and uh, first half of the 20th century. So, uh, first to talk a bit more about the con context of my uh, project. So uh, I'm working on the Bias in History project, uh, which looks at historical bias in different uh, historical source corpora. So I'm working on magic lantern slides, uh, but my two colleagues are working on illustrated children's literature and police reports. Uh, and we try to study biases in these corpora and uh, learn more about um, life in the 19th and uh, 20th centuries. So uh, the magic lantern was actually already invented in the mid 17th century, uh, but through um, perfections, uh, technological innovations, it became a true mass medium uh, in the 19th century. Um, and it was popular uh, all over the Western world and even also in Asia uh, and other continents. Um, so, within uh, the projection of uh, different images, uh, places especially were very popular, so the travelogue genre, uh, all kinds of, of travels were interesting to audiences, uh, not even uh, only real travels, but also travels to imaginary places, uh, such as uh, heaven, uh, the bottom of the sea, um, fairy worlds, etc. Um, so, uh, because it was so popular, the lantern was also used by different societal groups uh, for propaganda purposes. So, here at the bottom you see a picture um, uh, where we see uh, a lantern slide of Jesus being projected in a church. So, they were also used during church services. Um, and uh, I'm... Uh, yeah, the, um, so one of the groups that used uh, the lantern a lot were Catholics or Protestants in uh, England. So uh, the lantern is especially known for its very heterogeneous and mixed media use. So we have photographs, illustrations, different formats of uh, different shapes also of slides. We have black and white, we have hand colored, machine colored. So it's a very heterogeneous source, which up until now made it quite difficult to study through, uh, uh, through um, yeah, computer vision and um, to get an idea of this yeah, very mixed source. So um, today I'm going to present the case study to you of um, yeah, a part of my corpus. So my total corpus is 63,000 slides, uh, but today we're looking at uh, a subcorpus of 3,339 slides, which uh, present the Orient. Uh, and within the representations of the Orient, I am especially interested in representations of the Holy Land, uh, as you can see on this uh, slide here. Um, and uh, within this um, uh, corpus of the Orient, I took a random sample of 1,000 slides uh, to look at what's in there because it's such a large corpus um, and we want to know, uh, try to explore it a bit. Uh, and within this uh, sample, I'm also looking at a complex concept, uh, in this case, holiness, which was, of course, uh, very important to uh, visual culture uh, in Catholic and Protestant communities. Okay, so first um, I try to uh, cluster according to visual, uh, visual similarity uh, in um, PixPlot, uh, but this was not entirely successful as it really focused a lot on formal characteristics. So if there were uh, 100 slides with a red border, uh, it would just put them together and not focus on the content of the slides, but just on very basic formal uh, characteristics. Uh, but thanks to uh, multimodal models, uh, as we saw earlier, for those of you who attended <laughs> the presentation uh, by uh, Leonardo and, um, sorry, what's your <laughs> Fabian, yeah, in these. Um, we can now use uh, other uh, models, which are multimodal, such as FLIP. I will try if the video plays. Yeah. 
So this uh, tool is developed by uh, Leonardo Impet, um, and it allows us to uh, get a much better visual similarity uh, clustering, which focuses more on the content of slides uh, and not only on uh, very superfluous uh, formal characteristics. So here, for instance, uh, at the top you see all kinds of children's slides. So these were uh, usually very brightly colored. Uh, and we see that the model isolates these quite well. So you immediately get a sense of how many children's sites are in there, uh, etc. So it's very good for exploring uh, the corpus. Um, okay, so here at the bottom you also have some Gustave Doré etchings, which are also, uh, of course, very uh, prominent in uh, this religious um, representation in this uh, period. Okay, then the next uh, little clip I have for you. Uh, shows um, the, uh, also with the axis, uh, as we saw earlier. Uh, so you can look for uh, uh, concepts as well, not only the visual similarity between images, but also concepts within them. So for instance, this is a very holy image, uh, and it's interesting to uh, look, for instance, how the, the image clustering differs when we type women, for instance, instead of men, uh, and what kind of uh, yeah, contrasts come up. Okay, then um, here uh, is just the clip uh, interface. So uh, we, we use clip uh, to get these um, visualizations. Um, so here I used to prompt an image of holiness and these uh, were the 10 uh, or how many are there? <laughs> 12 first images that popped up. Uh, and we see that Jesus is a very prominent figure uh, when we look at holiness uh, and also that there's quite a lot of uh, bright colors and light colors. So lightness uh, seems also quite important in uh, capturing this concept. Uh, then uh, to look at a contrasting uh, concept, I also looked up wickedness, uh, which immediately shows these more dark black and white um, etchings and also a lot by Gustave Doré. Uh, we also see uh, Jesus pop up again, but more in tragic moments like his crucifixion, uh, betrayal, uh, etc. So we see that the model also picks up on the content of the slides and notices yeah, the tone, let's say, uh, of, of the image, images. Um, so then, of course, we also need to reflect on uh, what this model is trained on, how it uh, finds its, its um, yeah, how it makes these, these uh, connections. So uh, recently, uh, we got this uh, search engine to look at um, yeah, the, the kinds of images that pop up the highest um, when typing in certain terms. So, so for instance, here we type in holiness, you see a lot of book covers, um, and it's all quite, okay, predictable. But then when we look for wicked, wickedness, for instance, we see, of course, that, um, yeah, the uh, interpretation of this term has changed throughout time. Uh, in the 19th and 20th centuries, it would very much be associated with uh, Christianity and with, uh, yeah, uh, with, with this terminology and, and uh, imaginations. But, uh, of course, here you see a lot of uh, references to the musical wicked. Um, so this could also um, yeah, uh, influence the results we get. Maybe the model starts looking for witches or green colors. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, we, of course, need to reflect on, on the models we use as well. Uh, so for some conclusions, uh, so uh, CLIP multimodal models uh, tr really offer uh, new possibilities for exploration of very mixed uh, data such as magic lantern sites um, and, uh, and yeah, heterogeneous visual corpora in general. Uh, it also allows us to get a, a sense of complex concepts such as holiness. Um, but at the same time, it also leads us to interesting close viewings, for instance. So here we have uh, an image which mixes actually illustration and photography. Uh, and we see that there's a tendency to um, portray um, temporary uh, life on Earth through photographs, through snapshots, so to speak, while uh, more eternal and important and everlasting uh, concepts are uh, portrayed through illustration. Uh, so as you see here with a uh, wise man uh, following the star to find Jesus. Um, and we, of course, need to be aware of biases in the models uh, we use. So uh, for more information on the project, you can check out the project website, and you can also contact me if you have questions or tips. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.